Good morning. Today, we move further. In lecture number 38, we discuss a new model of surface patches, namely boundary interpolating patches. Here, we are going to be working with only boundary curves. So, given boundary curves, interpolate between them to achieve boundary interpolating patches. This is what the idea is. One can have two, three or four bounding curves. As you would have observed in case of Bezier patches or B span patches, the boundary curves in those cases are Bezier or B spline curves themselves. So, in a way, the tensor product patches and the boundary interpolating patches are interrelated. One can also have slope information at the boundary curves or what we call cross boundary tangents. I will tell you in a little while what I mean by them. The first model ruled patch. So, given two boundary curves R 1 of u and R 2 of u, this is the first curve, this is the second curve R 1 of u and R 2 of u. One can perform linear interpolation between two corresponding points on the respective curves, like so. It is like sketching or drawing different straight lines joining two corresponding points of these two curves. Mathematically, a ruled patch can be expressed as r as a function of u and v equals 1 minus v times r 1 of u plus v times r 2 of u. So, these are the u parametric directions, while these are the v parametric directions. So, if you notice, it is a linear interpolation model. We can rewrite this expression as R 1 of u plus v times R 2 of u minus R 1 of u. This vector here gives some sense of the tangent information between the two curve models R 2 of u minus R 1 of u. The second model locked it patch given again two boundary curves R 1 of u and R 2 of u. and also given additional information pertaining to cross boundary tangents T 1 of u and T 2 of u. For example, these are the two curves R 1 of u and R 2 of u and we have these as cross boundary tangents denoted by T 1 of u and T 2 of u. The directions shown here are opposite. What we can do is for any value of u, we can choose a corresponding point on this curve, a corresponding point on this curve and loft a curve using 
these two corresponding tangents, like so. And that is the basic difference between a ruled patch model and a lofted patch model. In a ruled patch model, we simply join the corresponding points by a straight line. But here, we use a higher order curve, in this case cubic, to create a lofted effect. Mathematically, a lofted patch can be written as r of u v equals phi 0 of v r 1 u plus phi 1 of v r 2 u plus phi 2 of v t 1 u plus phi 3 of v t 2 R1, R2, T1, and T2 are given to us. Any guess as to what phi 0, phi 1, phi 2, and phi 3 all as functions of v can be? You are right. These are the Hermite polynomials, the Hermite cubic polynomials that we had seen in case of for Gibson segments. The next model, bilinear Kuhn's patch, given four boundary curves. In all the previous model, we had considered two boundary curves, and in the lofted patch, we had also considered cross boundary tangents at those two curves. But here, we work with four boundary curves. Of those, this is the first one, this is the second one. This boundary curve here is denoted by b sub 0 function of u, b sub 1 function of u. We have two more, these are denoted by a sub 0 as v and a sub 1 as a function of v. This is the u parametric direction and that is the v parametric direction. There will be four points of intersection. The first one is represented as p 0 0. This would correspond for values of u and v both as 0. This is p 1 0 for u equals 1 and v equals 0. p 1 1 for u and v equals 1 and p 0 1 for u equals 0 and v equals 1. Here we do not have any additional information. So, we will probably be using ruled surface models. We can obtain them by combining any two pairs of opposite curves. For example, we can combine these two curves or combine these two curves. Let us say the first ruled patch model R 1 of u v is given by a linear combination of v 0 u and b 1 u. This model and this curve model 1 minus v times b 0 u plus v times b 1 of u. Likewise, we can have another rule patch r 2 u v equals 1 minus u times a 0 v plus u times a 1 Once again, we have a rule patch by combining these two models and we have another rule patch R 2 by combining these two opposite curves. The Coons bilinear patch can be obtained by adding R 1 and R 2. 
R U V equals R 1 U V plus R 2 U V. But wait a minute. Why are we subtracting R 3 U V? We do not know anything about it. We will probably have to make this adjustment to make sure that all the boundary conditions are met. So, R 3 of u and v is like a correction surface to ensure the boundary conditions are properly addressed. We need to determine R 3 and we will do this next. So, the correction surface, how do we determine this? So, this is the previous picture of bilinear Kuhn's patch. I have copied the expressions for R 1 here and R 2 here. Now, let us take a look at some of the boundary conditions to determine R 3. Remember that R is R 1 plus R 2 minus R 3. Now, R u 0 is what? Corresponding to values of v equals 0, R u 0 is the curve v 0 u, which is equal to R 1 u 0 plus R 2 u 0 minus R 3 u 0 from the Kuhn's patch model itself. Now, look at what R 1 u 0 can be. If you plug in v equals 0 here, this expression will be 0 and this will simply be v sub 0 of u. So, R 1 u 0 is v 0 of u plus 1 minus u a 0 0 plus u a 1 0. These two terms come from here. If you plug in v equals 0, we have 1 minus u a 0 0 plus u a 1 0 minus r 3 of u 1 0. If you look at a 0 of 0, we are here on this curve and for value v equals 0, we are here on this point p sub 0 0, which is what this is. Likewise, if you look at a 1 of 0, we are on this curve and for v equals 0, we are on this point p 1 0, which is this here. So, if we consider the right hand side and the left hand side, v 0 of u would cancel out and eventually we will have R 3 u 0 equals 1 minus u p 0 0 plus u times p 1 0. Let us save this result. Let us proceed further by linear Kuhn's patch we are now looking at R u 1. R u 1 will be R 1 u 1 plus R 2 u 1 minus R 3 u 1. For value of v equals 1, what is the surface R u 1? This is this curve here, this bounding curve v 1 of u. Now, plug in the value of v equals 1 here and v equals 1 here. What do you get? For v equals 1, we get 
V1 of u from R1 uv and for v equals 1, we get a 0 1 a 1 1 from R2 uv. So, the right hand side can be solved as V1 of u plus 1 minus u times a 0 of 1 plus u a 1 of 1 minus R 3 u 1. Look at what a 0 for v equals 1 is. We are on this curve for v equals 1, we are at point t 0 1, which is this. What is a 1 for v equals 1? We are here for v equals 1, we are at point p 1 1. With this right hand side, with this as the left hand side, v 1 of u cancels out. And so, we have r 3 u 1 equals 1 minus u times p 0 1 plus u times p 1 1. Okay, so, where are we heading? Let us copy the two results from before, one corresponding to r 3 of u and 1, which is equal to 1 minus u times p 0 1 plus u times p 1 1 and the second corresponding to r 3 u 0, which is equal to 1 minus u times p 0 0 plus u times p 1 0. What can we do with these two results? Well, we can linearly blend them in this manner. So, we can linearly blend R 3 u 0 and R 3 u 1 to get R 3 u v. That is R 3 of u v equals 1 minus v times R 3 u 0 plus v times R 3 u 1. where R 3 u 0 is this here and R 3 u 1 is this here. That is equal to 1 minus v times 1 minus u times p 0 0 plus u times 1 minus v times p 1 0 plus 1 minus u v p 0 1 plus u v p 1 1. If you work your algebra properly, you will notice that if you use R 3 u v in this form, R u v, which was the original model for this bilinear Kuhn's patch, which was the sum of R 1 u v, linear blend between v 0 and v 1 r 2 u v, which was the linear blend between a 0 and a 1 and if you subtract r 3 u v from that sum, r 3 u v is given by this expression, you would realize that all your boundary conditions are met. What are your boundary conditions? These are your four corner points and these four are corresponding bounding curves. In matrix form or in short form, the bilinear Kuhn's patch is given by the row vector 1 minus u u times a 0 of v, a 1 of v arranged in column form plus again a row vector involving parameter v, which is 1 minus v, v times the column 
b0 of u, b1 of u, which are these two bounding curves, minus your correction surface, which is 1 minus u, u times p0, 0, p0, 1, p1, 0, and p11 times the column vector 1 minus v, v. So, this is the mathematical expression for your bilinear Coombs pattern. In a similar manner, can you think about creating a bicubic Coombs patch with these four? bounding curves and to loft these curves, you would need cross boundary tangent information. Once again, with these four bounding curves and with the respective cross boundary tangent information, is it possible for us to create a bicubic patch. We will see this now. Let me warn you beforehand that although the principle is relatively simpler, the mathematical expressions involved are intricate. I would like you to pay full attention to the following discussion. So, given four bounding curves and four cross boundary tangents. So, these are two of the four curves B0 of u and B1 of u. These are the other two A0 of v and A1 of v. For B0 of u, we have the tangents as P0 of u, and for B1 of u, we have the tangents as t 1 of u. What would these cross boundary tangents mean? Well, physically, if you stand at any of these points, t 0 of u would be a set of directions, which would be tangents along the v parameter direction. Likewise, t 1 of u will be the tangents. If you stand on any of these points on B 1 of u, again these would be the directions along the parameter V direction. Likewise, the other two sets of cross boundary tangents S 0 of V and S 1 of V will be pointing along the parameter u direction, like so. Okay. Recall now, what we did when we created a lofted patch for a given u, we chose a point, we chose the corresponding tangent direction. For the same value of u, we chose a point here on this curve b 1 of u. Correspondingly, we also had the tangent information and we lofted a curve along the v direction. We are going to be doing something very similar here. As we did in case of bilinear Coombs patch, we will create two lofted surfaces R1 of uv and R2 of uv, and we will subtract a correction surface from this sum. So, these are the two parameter directions u and v. As you would know, these are the four corner points P 0 0, P 1 0, P 0 1 and P 1 1.
as I mentioned before, we will follow a very similar procedure as in the bilinear Coombs patch to blend two bounding curves B0 of u and B1 of u using cross boundary tangents T0 of u and T1 of u to get R1 of uv equals phi 0 of v times v 0 of u plus phi 1 of v times v 1 of u plus phi 2 of v times t 0 of u plus phi 3 of v times t 1 of u. Phi 0, phi 1, phi 2 and phi 3 as you would realize are hermite cubic polynomials in V. Likewise, we are going to be blending the two other bounding curves A0 of V and A1 of V and we will use cross boundary tangents A0 of V and S1 of V. And this way, we will create the other lofted patch model R2 of u and v is equal to phi 0 now is going to be a function of u times a 0 v plus phi 1 of u times a 1 v plus phi 2 of u times s 0 v plus phi 3 of u times s 1 v. So, our bicubic Coombs patch is given by R of u and v is equal to R1 of uv plus R2 of uv minus the correction circle, as in the case of bilinear Coombs patch, which is R3 of uv. Once again, we will determine this correction surface to meet all the requisite boundary conditions. Let us continue. So, I have copied the expressions for R1 uv here and R2 uv here. We will need these expressions to compute the correction surface R3 u and v. So, this is the information that we have, the four bounding curves and the four sets of cross boundary tangents. Now, let us compute what R u 0 is. Plug in the value of v equals 0 here and here. So, we have phi 0 of 0 times b 0 u plus phi 1 of 0 times b 1 of u plus phi 2 of 0 times t 0 of u plus phi 3 of 0 times t 1 of u plus phi 0 of u a 0 0 plus phi 1 of u a 1 0 plus phi 2 of u s 0, 0 plus phi 3 of u s 1 0. And of course, we are subtracting the correction surface r 3 u and now v equals 0. As I mentioned, the expressions will be quite intricate. And what is r u for v equals 0? This is this bounding curve b 0 of u. Okay. Let us analyze this a little further. If you remember your Hermite cubic functions, you would notice that phi 0 of 0 is 1 and all the other 3 will be 0. What is next? 
look at a 0 of 0. Here on this curve, for v equals 0, we have point P 0 0. How about a 1 0? We are on this curve here, for v equals 0, we are standing on P 1 0. How about S 0 of 0 and S 1 of 0? You are looking at the cross boundary tangents S 0 of B. For B equals 0, the cross boundary tangent along the u direction will be defined at P 0 0. S 1 0 you are looking at these sets of cross boundary tangents and for v equals 0, s 1 of 0 will be defined at p 1 of 0. We will come to these later. For now, if we solve this equation, we have r 3 u of 0 equals phi 0 of u times p 0 0 plus phi 1 of u times p 1 0 plus phi 2 of u times s 0 0 and phi 3 of u times s 1 0. If you notice, this term here cancels out with this term and we have taken this term on the right hand side here. Okay. Let us proceed. So, we have this patch and now we are interested in finding what r u 1 is. All we need to do is we need to plug in value of v equals 1 here, here and we need to subtract r 3 u 1 from this sum. So, the sum is phi 0 of 1 times b 0 of u plus phi 1 of 1, b 1 of u plus phi 2 of 1, t 0 u plus phi 3 of 1, t 1 u. Plug in v equals 1 in this expression to get this expression. Okay. Plug in v equals 1 here to get this expression, which is phi 0 of u a 0 1 plus phi 1 of u a 1 1 plus phi 2 of u s 0 1 plus phi 3 of u s 1 1. And of course, we have minus r 3 u 1. And after all, what is r of u and 1? This is for v equals 1 we will have this boundary curve here b 1 of u. Once again, if you remember the expressions for your harmonic cubic functions, this term goes to 0, this term goes to 1, this goes to 0 and this goes to 0. We can simplify this complex looking equation as r 3 u 1 equals phi 0 of u times p 0 1 plus phi 1 of u times p 1 1 plus phi 2 of u s 0 1 plus phi 3 of u s 1 1. Look at this expression here. Where did this come from? A 0 1. Beyond this curve, put v equals 1 to get t 0 1. Once again, a 1 1 beyond this curve, put v equals 1 to get p 1 1. These are the cross boundary tangents at v equals 1 here and here for this one. Do you have an inkling as to what we are trying to do here? In the previous slide, 
we computed R3 U0. Here, we compute R3 U1. And if you notice, R1 of UV and R2 of UV were two lofted patches that were created using the bounding curves and the cross boundary tangents. We are trying to do something very similar here to find R3. Let us see what is in store for us next. So, here I have copied the four important results that we would need R1 of u v, R 2 of u v, R 3 of u and 0, R 3 of u and 1. You must have noted down these expressions in your notes. All we would want to do now is to think about creating a lofted patch to get R 3. And for that, we would need information pertaining to the first partial derivative of r with respect to v. So, partial r over partial v is partial r 1 over partial v plus partial r 2 over partial v minus partial r 3 over partial v. So, this unfolds the suspense. If we plug in value for v as 0 and 1 respectively, we will have first derivative information of r 3 with respect to v. So, with these two information and with these two, we can think of creating a lofted patch for r 3. So, partial r over partial v will be equal to partial of this expression with respect to v plus partial of r 2 with respect to v minus partial of r 3 with respect to v. Okay. So, the first expression is partial of phi 0 with respect to v times v 0 u plus partial of phi 1 with v times v 1 u plus partial of phi 2 with v times t 0 u plus partial of phi 3 with v times t 1 of u plus phi 0 u times partial of a 0 v over partial v plus phi 1 u times partial of a 1 v over partial v plus phi 2 u times partial of a 0 v over partial v plus phi 3 u times partial of s 1 v over partial v minus partial of r 3 over partial v, which is this term here. Once again, you can compute the first derivatives with respect to v through these expressions here. Let us now define twist vectors denoted by chi sub i j, which is equal to the mixed derivative of r u v with respect to u and v evaluated at u equals i and v equals j. i and j would go from 0 to 1. These mixed derivatives are equal to partial s i v over partial v, which are also equal to partial t j u over partial u. As I said before, i k 
can assume any value 0 or 1 and so is the case with j. We will need these expressions r 3 of u 0 and r 3 of u 1. So, I have copied these equations right here. Now, for value v equals 0, partial a 0 of 0 with respect to v. So, in a sense what we are doing is we are computing partial of a 0 v with respect to v and evaluating that at v equals 0 and that will be equal to t sub 0 evaluated at 0. Likewise, partial of a 1 v over partial v where v equals 0 is equal to t sub 0 evaluated at 1. This is our Bones patch. This vector here would correspond to t sub 0 evaluated at u equals 0. Likewise, this vector here will be equal to t 0 for u equals 1. partial of r over partial v for v equals 0 is equal to t 0 u plus phi 0 u t 0 at 0 plus phi 1 u times t 0 at 1 plus phi 2 u times chi 0 0 plus phi 3 u times chi 1 0 minus partial R 3 with respect to V evaluated at u equals u and V equals 0 and that is equal to T 0 of u for V equals 1 partial of A 1 with respect to V for V equals 0 is equal to T 1 of 0 and partial of a 1 with respect to v for v equals 1 is t 1 evaluated at 1. These two vectors are given by these red arrows. t 1 at u equals 0 and t 1 at u equals 1. So, we will have partial of r with v for u and v equals 1 is equal to t 1 of u plus phi 0 u t 1 at 0 plus phi 1 u t 1 at 1 plus phi 2 u times chi 0 1 plus phi 3 u times chi 1 1 minus partial of r 3 with v for u equals u and v equals 1 and that will be equal to t 1 at u. So, from this equation we can compute partial r 3 with respect to v at u and 0 and from this equation we can compute partial of r 3 with v at u and 1. And we already have information pertaining to r 3 for u and 0 and r 3 for u and 1. All we need to do is use the set of 4 data to create a lofted surface r 3. To summarize, R 3 of u and 0 is phi 0 u t 0 0 plus phi 1 u t 1 0 plus phi 2 u s 0 0 plus phi 3 u s 1 0. R 3 at u and v equals 1 
is equal to phi 0 u b 0 1 plus phi 1 u b 1 1 plus phi 2 u s 0 1 plus phi 3 u s 1 1. And just about now, we had computed what partial R3 over partial V are for V equals 0 and V equals 1. They are respectively phi 0 u p 0 0 plus phi 1 u t 0 1 plus phi 2 u chi 0 0 plus phi 3 u chi 1 0 and phi 0 u t 1 0 plus phi 1 of u t 1 evaluated at 1 plus phi 2 u chi 0 1 plus phi 3 u chi 1 1. For the correction surface R 3 u v, this is the information we have R 3 u 0 R 3 u 1 partial R 3 over partial v at u and 0 and partial R 3 over partial v at u and 1. With this information, it is very natural for us to create a lofted surface R 3 u v as phi 0 now a function of v times R 3 u 0 plus phi 1 function of v times R 3 u 1 plus phi 2 function of v times partial R 3 or partial v u 0 plus phi 3 v times partial R 3 over partial v u 1. These are the expressions we will have as functions of u and phi 0, phi 1, phi 2 and phi 3 will be Hermite polynomials in V. You can do the math and verify that R 3 u V constructed in this manner would satisfy all the boundary conditions pertaining to the corner points, pertaining to the bounding curves and also relating to the cross boundary tangents. By this time, you would already have the expression for R 3 u 0, R 3 u 1, the slope with respect to v evaluated as u 0 of R 3 and the slope with respect to v of R 3 evaluated at u 1. 